a lot of different supplies. You're gonna need your Model Magic, and I did give you colored Model Magic. I am using some like bright neon red today. So I'm gonna use my Model Magic. You're also gonna need a plastic baggie, which I have. I put a plastic fork, but I also do kind of use a plastic knife. And I wanna say that as you are looking at some of these, you might not have all of these supplies. So if you don't have a plastic fork or plastic knife, you are going to be a creative problem solver. And when you see what I use it for, you can find something else that works just as good. I do use water. So I have a cup of water, I have a paper towel, and this is really important. You want a clean work surface that is grown up approved. The Model Magic I chose because it really doesn't stick. It really doesn't make a mess. Uh, but just double check with your grown up for sure. And make sure you're in a spot tomorrow that'll work for them. And there's some optional tools that you need. These are totally optional. You see I have a whole bunch of things here. You could get Q-tips. You could get... Um, if you have pipe cleaners at home, straws, toothpicks, there's a whole bunch of different choices for you. Um, those are completely optional, but if you want to gather any of those tonight or tomorrow, especially if you're working at home, you can get those. If you are in the maroon cohort and you're working with me tomorrow in school, I will have all these things for you. You don't have to bring them with you, but if you are in the green cohort or the blue cohort, you'll just want to make sure you have your model magic and baggie and everything. Okay. So here we go, on to the next slide. So first thing I do when I sculpt is I gather all my materials. This is like a cooking show, I did that ahead of time. I have my good workspace right here that works for me. It's a, like a cutting board, so it's a good space for me to work on. And then the next thing that I do is I warm up my Model Magic in my hands. I only have smaller bags of Model Magic. So you are making a really mini little friend but I'm warming it up in my hands. A lot of people don't know that, but Model Magic works a lot better when it's warm and it's kind of a stress relief. So sometimes I just like stand there and I play with my Model Magic and I warm it and I warm it. So tomorrow as I'm talking, if you want, you could just kind of warm it up in your hands. Then since I only have a little bit and I wanna to try to make sure that I don't run out of any, I separate it into three pieces. So I'm gonna pull it apart into three pieces. So I have one, two, three big pieces. They're not perfectly even, but they're pretty darn close. So I have my three pieces. One of them I'm going to use for the body. So I'm gonna pick one for the body. Ah, I'll pick this one. And I'm gonna roll it into a sphere. So to start, you guys will just really figure this out as you go. I kind of start it just by pinching it into a semi ball. And then from there, I roll it. I tend to roll in my hand. Some of you will roll on your work surface, but you want to try and get it into a perfect sphere. Dee, 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 dee. So, well, not a perfect sphere. Perfect is boring. So let's just, we'll shoot for a sphere. So that'll be the first thing we do tomorrow is we separate our model magic out and we roll it into spheres. Now the other form that I want to create, because these are three dimensional, so I call them forms instead of shapes. The other form is a coil, also known as a wormy. I know a lot of you made wormies with Play-Dohs when you were little. So I'm gonna grab one of my other little hunks of Model Magic. And before I try to roll it into a wormy, I'm gonna set my sphere aside. I tend to pinch it first into like a hot dog shape. It's a lot easier to make a coil if you kind of start with like a longer hot dog-ish shape. I know that's like the weirdest hot dog you've ever seen. So I'm kind of pinching it first. And then I roll with my fingers. My hands are my favorite tools to work with. So I actually roll with my fingers and I use both hands. If you're struggling, this is just one of those practice things, but that's my little tip. I start in the middle and I'm rolling out with my fingers. If it gets a little wonky, I just pinch it and help it. And then I keep going and I make some coils. So that's my other thing. So I'm going to make a sphere and some coils. Then I am going to use my last little hunk and I'm gonna pull it apart and I'm gonna make the little details with that. So a lot of you guys are probably looking at this like, oh, maybe I've never done this before. Well, I would argue
argue that a lot of you have kind of using my snow snowman building techniques or snow woman or snow person. A lot of you guys have built snowmen before. A lot of you have built sandcastles. It's a it's very similar sculpting techniques. So I'm going to roll like a little sphere for the head. Maybe I'll just set this aside for extra details later. So I have a body sphere, a head sphere. I have some, a coil that I'm now going to chop up, make some arms and legs. And I get some body parts. And there's so many different ways to sculpt, but I do tend to sculpt um, by making all the body parts separate. <laughs> so it looks like a bit of a massacre, but there's my body parts. And I'm gonna start to attach it together. So I'm gonna attach the head to the body. Model magic is a little bit frustrating to attach. It does stick together, but if you are rough with it after it dries, sometimes it breaks apart. If you've had that experience before and you're a little bit nervous, there's a few options. So option one is to get something from your house, like a Q-tip, a straw, a toothpick. And I'm gonna be very careful with my Q-tip. I'm gonna cut the top off and I'm gonna make it into a little stick, cut the bottom off, make it into a little stick. Um, you can attach things just by putting a stick into your Model Magic. This only works with things that don't get cooked. Like if you are a Sculpey person, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's like a plastic clay. You can't do this with Sculpey, um, but it does work with Model Magic. So anything that's not going to go into the oven and burn up, you can do this with. So I did put that together. Honestly though, my favorite technique is I usually just use a little bit of water. So I want you guys to be creative problem solvers at home. You can do a bunch of different things. If you don't have the stick, just use the water and you stick it together. And the other thing that I do, I'm gonna move my arms and legs, is called welding. I imagine I'm a doctor and I have to stitch my snowman head on. So you guys can probably do this with your fingers. I can't, so I have to use either like a Q-tip or part of a tool. And I take a little bit of model magic from the head and I'm pushing it onto the body. So I don't know if you guys can see it, it's hard to see, but I call it welding. I take some model magic from the head and I'm kind of pushing it and smoothing it onto the body. So that's another way to do it. And worst case scenario, if your sculpture does fall apart, I know some of you do have some Elmer's glue at home. We're, we've been using Elmer's glue, most of us, since we were younger at school. So we don't think it's like anything special, but Elmer's glue is actually one of my favorite glues. It's really strong. So if it ever comes apart, you can just use Elmer's glue to put it back together. I also, here's another trick. I'm giving you guys lots of options. You'll figure out what you like best tomorrow. I also sometimes just use a Q-tip, dipped in a little bit of water, and I can use the Q-tip to smooth, or I can use my finger. So that's a great way to attach pieces of Model Magic together. So I'm just showing you guys a bunch of different options. You can pick whatever you like, but if it does fall apart, please don't get frustrated. Um, you can see me for some glue, or if you have glue at home, you could just use that. So I'm attaching the pieces together. So the same thing with the arms and legs. It's kind of fun because you can play. You can make your guy sit, you can make him stand, you can make her stand, whatever you want. Um, I have some longer legs going on. I know a lot of you have like tiny little legs. So if you have tiny little legs, you might have to play around and see how, how will they stand. So maybe you have little legs like this. So play around with it, see what works best for you. And remember, you can add water, you can add little sticks, you can just stick it on, you can weld it, you can use your fingers, you could use a tool. A lot of this is just kind of playing around and not being afraid to try new things. So I'm sticking some little legs on. And you'll find different things in your house and you'll start to see different things around you as potential art making materials or art making tools. And that's kind of the cool thing and the reason why I do love to do this project is you're gonna start seeing potentials for sculptures everywhere, which I love. So there's my little guy and you're thinking, wait, I don't see it yet, I don't see it yet. So I gotta kind of put it together so you can see, put some arms on. I'm going super warp speed fast for you guys, just so you can see the potential. So put some arms on. I'm gonna put some ears on. 
Just be careful with the water. If you get too much, it gets kind of slimy and you might just have to wipe your hands down. I do have a paper towel that I keep near me. So once in a while, I just kind of wipe my hands on a paper towel, make some little ears, put the little ears on. And I'm going super fast because I've made a lot of these. And I just kind of like to show you what your potential is. Then I start to get creative with little things like a snout. Like I can put a snout on my guy by making a little sphere of clay, squishing it down, and not only just sticking it on because he looks a little bit like a clown right now, but really starting to weld some things on and make sure that they stick on really good and really smooth it and make it look like part of your sculpture. So I'm really trying to weld and stick it on. And kind of the cool thing is I do have a knife here. So if I want to open up his little snout and make it like a mouth, I can literally just cut it carefully. I'm just using a plastic knife. They give these out at school, so it can't be too bad for you. And you can open his mouth or her mouth. You can put a little nose on there. So you can really play around. And it's going to be awkward at first, but the more you do it, the better you get. I did give you guys Google Eyes on the packages. You can stick your Google Eyes in there if you want. Or honestly, I just find different tools and I'll make like an eye socket with something round. Pencil erasers are one of my favorite things to work with. I stick my pencil in my clay all the time or my whatever sculpture tool I'm using. And it looks kind of scary right now, but then I could put little eyeballs in there. I can stick my Google eyes in. If you have glue at home and you wanna just wait till it dries, you can, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going kind of fast, but what's gonna happen is tomorrow you guys are going to start to work. <laughs> You'll get to this point where it looks a little funky. Maybe you got an arm and a leg over here. Maybe your head's attached, but the body's not attached. So if you are halfway done, which most of you will be halfway done tomorrow, what you'll have to do is you'll have to stop. And when you stop, if you leave your little guy out, it will dry and you won't be able to keep working on it, which is really frustrating. So if you're in process, which you all will be, you need to wrap up your model magic. If you're in class, I'll give you a baggie. If you're at home, you'll have to find a baggie from your grown up, or you'll have to get creative and reuse your model magic bag gently, or you might have to get like, I don't know, plastic wrap or something. But tomorrow, I guarantee all of you will kind of be like in process, but not quite done. So make sure if you are in the green cohort or if you are in the blue cohort, you're very carefully bagging up all your stuff, putting it someplace where dogs and small children can't get to it. So you keep your model magic nice and fresh in a baggie, nice and gentle too. If I go like this right now, even though it's in a baggie, I will squish it. So I have to be really, really, really gentle. Um, I keep all my tools nearby because I know the next day I'm going to need them. So if it's okay with your grown-ups, you can keep your tools nearby. And you're going to keep all of your stuff nice and gentle until Friday. And my goal is to have this be a two-day sculpture where we finish after two days of making it. So that's kind of my goal. And a lot of this is just going to be learning, guys. So it might not go perfect for you, and that's okay. The other thing is most of you have blue model magic, so you're gonna have a blue sculpture for now. In the future, we can talk about using different paints to paint it, but for now, I just want you to play around with creating a cute little sculpture for the first time. So I'm gonna stop my video.